So now for this last example underneath exponentials, this is actually kind of a sneaky one because in fact we are not going to be integrating at all. Look carefully and you'll see why. The question says, use the trapezoidal rule with five function values to approximate the area between the curve and the x-axis from x equals one to x equals three, give your answer correct to four decimal places. All right, boy, there's a lot to take in here. So let's just take it one step at a time. The first thing is the question says, use the trapezoidal rule. Now let's remember, this is a method for trying to find an area and uh, well, let's find you know, close to an area when you can't actually integrate that thing directly or when integrating that thing directly is an excessive amount of work. And it's like, we just need something close, that'll be good enough. Now, if you look closely at the function that they're actually handing to us, y equals e to the power of one on x, uh, this is a good example of a function that we do not know how to integrate. It may well be possible, but we don't have access to that knowledge. No problem, we can actually still use the trapezoidal rule to get an approximate result like they're saying over here on the right hand side. Now the next piece of information in here that needs to be paid attention to is this crucial phrase here, five function values. Now, um, we were posed this question before in one of our previous lessons, when we are told to use the trapezoidal rule, um, how many trapeziums are we supposed to use to find out the area? Like, will we get told? And the answer is absolutely you will be told. Um, sometimes, you know, you want to get a specific amount of accuracy, so you'll have to work that out yourself, but in 99.9% in of the situations you're going to encounter, they just hand you, here's the number of, um, you know, applications of the rule that we want, or as you can see in this particular question, they'll give you the number of function values they want. Now I wanna call your mind back to when we were looking at trapezoidal rule. Let me just dig back into my notes here. Here's the trapezoidal rule, right? Now remember, what are the function values? Well, when you have a look at the trapezium that you use to approximate the area, the function values are these vertical lines that um, are parallel to each other and they form the, the two parts that go into, uh, up here, that go into the area of a trapezium formula, right? So if I use some, uh, let's find a, a really obvious color here. If I use a color like green, you can see here's the first function value and here's the second function value. I've got two function values when I have one trapezium. If I keep on going here, you can see I've highlighted these in green. When I tried out two trapeziums to get more accurate, I had three function values, three function values for two trapeziums. And to just do one more example here, again, highlighted in green for you, I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine function values for eight trapeziums. So in other words, you've always got one more tr uh, function value than you have Trapezium. So when we come down here, this question, whoops, went past it. This question says five function values. So that's another way of saying using four trapeziums or four applications of the trapezoidal rule. Another way you could think about it is you could draw the five function values. If I had something like, well, here's a function value, uh, here's another function value, here's another one, here's another one, and the final one over here. There's five vertical lines, and if I join up all of the tops there, you can see there are your four trapeziums. One, two, three, and four. So, that's a lot to take in, right? But now we're pretty much ready to actually begin the question. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rehearse for you what is the uh, trapezoidal rule for five function values. Well, I'm gonna call my function values y naught, y1, y2, y3, and y4. You might recall that we start off counting at zero so that the final value matches up with the number of trapeziums that we've got. So I can say the area is going to be equal to approximately, and now let's see if we can remember the formula. It's h on two, where h is the height of each of the trapeziums. Um, you know, it'll be, it'll be this distance here, right? That distance there, they're all the same. That'll be our height h on two, and then what we multiply by is the first function value, the last function value, and then we double all the ones in the middle. Remember, we're doubling the ones in the middle because each one gets used twice. It gets used by the trapezium on its left and the trapezium on its right. So, uh, you know, over here, say this function value in here right in the middle, it gets used once by this trapezium and it gets used once by this trapezium. So that's why we use it twice. So therefore, um, noting that I've got my particular names of my function values up here in the top, 
Um, the first one will be y0, the last one will be y4, and then I get double all the ones in the middle, which is y1, y2, and y3. So now I've got my area, um, my trapezoidal rule formula for the area set up, I need to know what are all the things that I'm going to substitute into here, okay? Now, none of the values that I need to substitute into this are actually in the question directly, but I will use the question to actually get them. I'm um, thinking about the x values that correspond to these y values, the way I'm going to get them is to find out where along have I passed within my uh, domain here. So just coming back to this example that I did over here, it's got the same number of function values that we want, so if I just uh, use this as our little marker here, right? The question tells us that we're going to start at x equals 1 and then end x equals 3. So that is my start and my end. Now you can see from 1 to 3, if I'm breaking it up into four trapeziums, I need four equal heights going along. So there's a total distance of 2. If I'm breaking that up into chunks, um, into four chunks, then each of those chunks is going to be a half. Um, a half plus a half plus a half plus a half will give me that total distance along the x axis of two. So if that's a half, the first thing I know is, oh, this is the value that's gonna go into h. That is the height of each of the trapeziums. That's good. And then secondly, it also tells me where the function values are. It doesn't tell me what they're equal to, but it does, does tell me the x values that correspond to them. I've got, um, I've already said one and three, they're my y naught and my y four. And then all I need to do is progress half a unit every time. Uh, let's go back to green now. Um, this one in here, actually I don't need arrows there, will be 1.5. This one in here will be two. And then this one on here will be 2.5. So you can see those values in there. Each time I'm progressing half, 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 and then up I go. So one of the helpful ways to make sure you do all this substitution correctly, which some people find useful, is to draw a table, okay? Now this is not necessary, um, I'll show you how to do this in a second without it, um, but it is really helpful to make sure you get all of your values correct, right? So what I can do is I can say, for each of the x values, I'm going to get a corresponding y value. Don't forget that the y values are e to the one on x. So therefore, um, in my, let me make a bit of a table here. How wide am I going to go? Something like that should do me. Let's see if we can fit it in. Okay, um, I'm going to say my x values are 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, and 3. And now I'm going to calculate what the uh, y values are that correspond to those. Just be careful when you're doing your substitution here, and obviously you're going to need your calculator to help you. This will be e to the power of 1 over 1. So that'll be e to the power of 1. This will be e to the power of 1 on 1.5. You can see what I'm doing is I'm substituting into the definition of the function. I'll have e to the power of a half, e to the power of 1 over 2.5, and then e to the power of a third. Once you've got each of these, they are what you're going to substitute into y0, y4, y2, y1, y2, and y3. Okay, so what I've got is I'm going to have, this is approximately equal to um, a half on two, that's going to be equal to a quarter, and then in here I'm going to put in all of my values. Now what I've actually done is I've got my calculator already and um, I've evaluated what these are. So here are my values over here, and you can see I've actually worked out the final answer down the bottom, but we'll, we'll get to that shortly. So I don't want to do that, let's just come back up the top. Okay, now what I've got here for my values is uh, everything here to whatever number of decimal places, like 10 or 11 or something like that. Now the reason why I've written these is because I actually want to see those numbers on the working of, uh, you know, whoever's mark uh, work I'm actually looking at. So when I'm marking, that way I know the, the thought process and the, the, the student's actually done the work. And also, if something has gone wrong in the student's working, I can also backtrack and find out what was the nature of their error. The reason why this is so important to emphasize right now is that at this point most of you will just reach for your calculator and you may well go ahead and put this entire line in and you just get a number at the end. If that number is wrong and you just write that final number, it's really, really hard to work out what on earth actually went on behind the scenes because it's all disguised by the calculator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these values over here in the my working on the right hand side 
and I'm going to substitute them into my line. So let's see here. I'll do a few decimal places. So I've got uh, e to the one is 2.718. Uh, e to the th a third is 1.39. Looks like it's a six is what that's going to round to. Plus two lots of, actually I'm going to put that on the next line because I think I'm probably not going to fit. Two lots of, uh, y1, where's that? That's e to the power of 1 over 1.5. So that's 1.948. Y2 is 1.649 plus the final one. Well, it's actually the third one, but I've already written down the final one. It's 1.492, isn't it? Okay, so there we go. Now, even though I have rounded off clearly in this line, I've rounded off to three decimal places. When I'm actually punching this on my calculator, I'm going to actually use the exact values that the calculator has evaluated. And the reason for that, of course, is every time you round off, for example, um, here I rounded, this is 1.396, so I rounded up by 0 0.0004. Um, this one, I think I also rounded up by 0 0.00. 0, 3. Um, I rounded up a bunch of times and I'm also multiplying by 2 so eventually all those things kind of gather together and they are going to make my answer off by a little bit perhaps by a significant figure. So that's why you can see what I've actually done is I've gone and evaluated it precisely using my calculator and that's given me this value you can see right down the bottom uh, 3.572 613, I'm actually going to write my entire calculator display here um, and the reason why is because that way if I approximate incorrectly um, some questions, the approximation, we're looking at that, we're actually marking, we, we assign a whole mark to it but often we don't because you approximate all the time and we, we're not going to deduct your mark every single time because you, you'd lose a lot of marks if you didn't know how to do this one skill. So therefore I'm putting the exact value in and then when I go to the question, I can get rid of this calculator now, when I go to the question, it says, give your answer correct to four decimal places. Now I will actually do the rounding. So I will say it's 3.573. In fact, I'll go one better than that. At this point, I'm ready to conclude, remembering that I was trying to find an, uh, an area, right? So I'm going to say, therefore, the area is, um, I should write the word approximately because this is an approximation. Approximately. And this is where I also include my units rather than in the process of um, doing the working above so the units don't just appear out of nowhere. So, whew, take a deep breath. That was a lot of work because this is a very involved question. But remember, all the steps that um, feed into this are very logical. It's like, I, I can't, I can't have integrate this. So I'm gonna use the trapezoidal rule. How am I gonna use the trapezoidal rule? They specify the number of trapeziums. You have to find out where they go. So that was us finding out our different x values and the function values or y values that go with that. Um, you can use a table to help you make sure you logically set it out and not miss any numbers or mistype them. And then carefully go to your calculator, do an evaluation, show us that working as you go through, and then conclude with your area.